On paper, the Seastar S30 and the Dwarf Mini look almost identical. Same optics, same sensor, both promising stunning space photos even if you know nothing about astronomy. Look at the specs and you'd think there's no difference. Except one shoots portrait, the other landscape. But after testing them side by side for a few weeks in freezing temperatures, we discovered something surprising. They feel completely different. One feels like a kitchen appliance, the other feels like a real tool. And if you're buying the S30 because you've heard the app is easy and pro, you might be making a huge mistake. Let's start with hardware. First impressions matter. The Seastar S30 feels plastic and industrial in the hand. Functional. It reminds us of a router or maybe a smart speaker. It's not cheap, but it definitely feels like consumer electronics. Now pick up the Dwarf Mini, and immediately you notice the density. It's smaller, yes, but it feels substantial. The finish, the curves, the power button, it almost feels like magic. A few years ago, holding a full astrophotography rig in your palm would have been impossible. Yes, the S30 is portable. But the Dwarf Mini? Portable in the sense that it disappears. The S30 wants its own bag. The Dwarf Mini fits in your jacket pocket or backpack, and you forget it's even there. Every photographer knows this. The best camera or telescope is the one you don't have to plan for. The Dwarf just comes with you. And the biggest hardware difference, how they move. The S30 demands respect. Don't touch me, control me through the app. Hands-on isn't really an option. The Dwarf Mini, on the other hand, screams, touch me, use me. Tilt 225 degrees vertically, spin 360 degrees endlessly. You control it directly. That sense of freedom is impossible to fake. Sure, both can be moved via app, but the difference is night and day. The S30 has a tiny bit of backlash, like driving an RC car with high latency. The Dwarf Mini stops exactly where you want. Speed, precision, and direct manual control make it feel alive. It pulls you in and makes you want to explore. Now software. This is where most people make their decision and where the S30 hype usually starts. The S30 is plug and play. Set it down, tap a button, and it handles alignment, tracking, stacking, and processing quietly in the background. The Dwarf Mini is different. Its interface lays all controls out, transparent, not hidden. It takes about 45 minutes to learn, but that granularity becomes full control. Automation is still there, but now you can tweak everything yourself. The S30 puts you on autopilot. The dwarf invites you to explore. And here's the trap. If you buy the standard S30 expecting advanced pro features, you'll hit a ceiling fast. For real power in the Seastar ecosystem, you need the S30 Pro, or wait for the S50 Pro. The base S30 is designed for simplicity, not professional level control. Think of it like buying a base iPad to edit a feature film. It looks capable, but the hardware can't keep up. So how do you choose? If you want a budget-friendly, easy-to-use telescope you could hand to a child to explore the universe, the Seastar S30 is fantastic. But if you want to learn astrophotography, enjoy a creation tool that feels premium, fits in your pocket, and lets you frame your own shots, reach for the Dwarf Mini. If you want a future-proof Seastar with full pro features and don't mind carrying a dedicated bag, go for the S30 Pro. Otherwise, under $400, a Dislas pick is the one that feels like a tool. Think for yourself. Don't just follow hype. Drop a comment, let us know your take. Clear skies, and we'll catch you in the next one.